Chuck Lorre? No, it's not. <laughs> it's, oh, okay, Eddie, I got you there. No, 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 no. It is not a trick. It is not a trick. No, no, no. Turn your cameras on so that this thing can record. <laughs> There we go. Yvonne knows how to do it. Yeah, three more people, this thing will start recording. <laughs> <laughs> Maureen, you, you cannot talk anymore, okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So the question, the question here is, uh, why is the market rallying like it is? And, and I think we know why. So some of the big companies that reported earnings microsoft apple you know all google and all that uh these are the companies that drive the market so whatever they're doing is what drives the market right yeah. so we know that especially apple you know apple raises uh, or rises then uh, market moves up amazon reporting extra good earnings i think yesterday or I forget when it when it reported, but you know, really, really nice earnings, and that's a one point three trillion dollar company, also. So you have to pay attention to those things. So I think that's why the market is rallying because if you look at the Nasdaq, that's what's been driving you know this whole week. Every other tech company, about thirty percent of the Dow uh, reported, so they were good. But once that fizzles out, what next? That's the question, right? I hope it goes down. <laughs> yeah, I really hope it does. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking. I hope put, so too. Yeah, I'm thinking you have some puts, right? Yes, I put debit spread, Eddie. Yeah. <laughs> and right before I went up to the moon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I got some puts that I had to cut, and uh, you know, I'm gonna get back into them though. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna get back into them. You know, they were bleeding, and I was like, man, I don't know. Thing just keeps going to the moon. So, uh, but it's filled every gap that we know ab up above for now. Mm -hmm. So we've got a couple gaps uh, below that we need to go back and fix. And I think we will, you know, in the next next few days, few weeks. I think I think we will. We'll we'll, we'll fix that. So as soon as you get a clue, Eddie, let as, us know. As soon as I get what? <laughs> as as soon as you start seeing those clues, let us know. And well, I'm telling you now, you know, yeah, because through those gaps, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was in a put too, and I know you said don't take max loss, but I couldn't get out of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't a lot, it was just $85. So, okay, and it was, yeah, it was in um, RUT, okay, yeah, the Russell 2000. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, because you mentioned, oh, you know, we can look at other things other than SPX. So I looked True. at that. It's pretty similar and mm -hmm. um, not as aggressive. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. So I'm going to be looking at that. Yeah. Some more too. Very nice. Yeah. So what uh, what Maureen is talking about is, um, you know, the indexes uh, that you can... That you can about that uh the indexes uh, that you can also trade without having to worry about assignment so they all you know all the indexes are cash settled uh, so she's talking about the rasa 2000 you can do spx everybody knows that one you can do ndx which is the nasdaq uh index the trader one and then there's djx as well uh, there might be a few others but uh All right, so I got a small agenda today, uh, as usual. Well, maybe not as usual, but a friend of mine sent me a rather long email uh, saying she wants these uh, 16 things discussed. And I'm like, dude, what the heck? <laughs> so I don't think I'm going to discuss all these things, but uh, especially number one. Number two. yeah yeah okay so back to basics let's start there let's see who's on the call so back to basics calls and puts uh maybe we can talk about that uh a lot of people have been trading 
spreads and I don't know how much they how much time they actually spent trading calls and puts so if you're trading spreads now how much time did you did you spend with just regular calls and puts how, how much time did you spend how long did you trade those before you decided that you know this is not cutting it for me I'm, I'm just gonna go to call I mean spreads Who, who's who's doing that anybody, anybody Maybe, I've never that? I've never traded in the calls and puts I've only done spreads so far you've only done spreads so far mm-hmm okay all right and, and you just you just skip right over you know you decided you're not you know you're not going to take the staircase you're just going to take the elevator right <laughs> yeah just because you know the cost it's um, more expensive yeah mm -hmm. okay so cost is prohibitive okay all right that makes sense what else yeah same story for me uh uh eddie yeah i do most display because of the cost same here the cost um, the cost. Uh -huh. lost money on one of those it was probably a put yeah but uh mainly the cost but at your suggestion mm -hmm. and to be because calls and puts um as you say are the the basis so you know keeping them keeping in practice keeping the skills the execution sharp yeah. so back at it yep yep so cost is prohibitive. Uh, we know that, uh, especially if you go with a guidance of 45 to 90 days. I mean, when you, once you start hitting that 45 days, just just a single call at the money is usually very, very expensive, right? Mm -hmm. Very expensive or a put for that matter. So I, I can see why cost would be you know, prohibitive. And then if you go closer in terms of DTE, closer to zero, obviously they get cheaper. But then again, you introduce risk because your thesis may not work as quickly as you expect it to, right? Yeah. Um, but other than cost, what else is driving you guys to do spreads instead of calls and puts? Um, price action. Everything yeah, moves um, faster, especially with SPX. Yeah. Um, yeah. However, I would like to start doing more because I find that I'm losing um that knowledge yes uh yeah i don't like practicing in um sim right <clears throat> because it's so unrealistic got it so you mentioned spx um uh, and that's kind of leading me to my next one i mean is there a particular reason you went for spx and not any of the others um let me give you a clue the what the starts the word starts with f Ends with an O. Maureen, you're no. not getting it. No. 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 FOMO. Oh, no. Oh, man, I didn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because you're missing out. Everybody's talking about SPX. Everybody wants to make money. That's where the money is. Or so it seems. So. I want to put it to you guys that maybe SPX is not the one to trade. But it's so fast. I want, it is so fast. And it Wait, is, it is, it is, that thing is good, man. It will pay you. I'm, I'm not a swing trader. That's not my, you know, I think that's what was attracting me to SPX. I yeah. need to see results. You need Quicker. to see, okay. You need to see results. You need to see them yesterday, right? Yeah. I'm with you on that one. Uh, but I'm also thinking you like to make money, not lose money. Okay. All right. So based on that, what if we came up with a strategy that pays us, not just takes the money a lot of the time, but, but pays us consistently because we, we need consistency, mm -hmm. right? And SPX will give us money consistently if we are lucky 90% of the time. Wow. Show me that one person who's lucky 90% of the time. Anybody want to raise their hand? Well, just the word luck mm. alone. I mean, yeah. it can't be. <laughs> yeah, because it beats all reason. I mean, you think that thing is going to go up, it turns down. Mm -hmm. 
the the, yeah. the chat tells us that uh, we, you know it's going it's going to go it's going to go up, and then what happens? It just turns around, and before you know it, you're stopped mm -hmm. out. Stopped out. Look at Friday. Yeah. This, is, this is Friday. I didn't even trade Friday. Friday we went all the way up, and I didn't look at the pre market because I was busy. But uh, but it looks like it it broke some people's hearts over here when you you know went all the way up and if you stayed in it brought it down then later on came back up but you probably got stopped out if you had a stop loss uh, yes if you but, if you put in a stop loss if you, <laughs> you, you <laughs> are you suggesting you did not no no i actually uh did some practice yeah. with uh spx um buying i think it was um calls it wasn't this week it was the week before and um i did put in the stop loss i was practicing um using the um, template mm -hmm. and um i lost every time i think i lost about four and maybe one one yeah so i was like okay i'm heading back over the spreads <laughs> yep yeah so i've been discovering more and more that uh stop losses on on SPX are um, they're just as dangerous right they mm -hmm. we tend to get stopped out so so we need a strategy for that as well that I'm working on that I'll, I'll, I'll share that maybe can help mm -hmm. so what I'm trying to get to here is that a lot of us are trading basically how is it I, th I think we're in a rushing mode or we are trying to recover losses that we made last year or last month or the whole of these or something right last week because we've suffered such great losses that if if you had a consistent way and your account is growing in a healthy way you really wouldn't be doing spreads and stuff like that at least not credit spreads so for a small account especially if you're doing spx yes you can grow it really quickly but when you lose it hurts and it hurts real bad because that thing turns around so fast so i want to find how what is, what is the best way uh, you know to just grow a small account using simple calls and puts is there such a thing right is there such a thing so let me pause the question would you rather make a hundred two hundred dollars every day or would you rather you know make a thousand two thousand lose three thousand four thousand what 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 exactly is the goal what what would you rather do let me hear some uh some thoughts absolutely 100 200 every day i'm, I'm for it me too small gains yes yep. yes smaller gains and consistently even even smaller losses even smaller losses if yes. any yes if yeah. any yeah, yeah. I, th I think that should be the general consensus. And if you know my story, you know that I used to trade really big, you know, 50, 60, 100 contracts sometimes on SPX. And I was making a tremendous amount of money. But I was also losing a tremendous amount of money. Right? On the day you win or you, you make money, you make, you, I mean, you're singing all the way to the bank. Bank knew mm -hmm. me. Right <laughs> down the street, they they know they, you know they see me pull into the parking lot. They're like, "All right, guys, you know, <laughs> Eddie's in town." <laughs> right? They don't see me for a few days. They're like, uh, you know, they're sending dispatch out to my house to check, you know, whether I'm all right. <laughs> because you get used to making ten, fifteen. Stop. Stop. Let me, let me, let me. There we go. All right. So you, I mean, you get used to making, uh, you know, five, five, uh, five digit gains. You also have to be prepared to make five digit losses, right? Uh, did I meet myself as well? No, no, I'm good. So, no. so what we have to do is, uh, or what I did is I recalibrated and I discovered that I am much happier with smaller gains every day or every other day than huge gains and then lose because my psychology was such that on the day that I lose, I get really sad, right? Now, I'm a happy guy. 
so when I'm sad for five minutes, that's a really long time, right? But I, but, but it's not a nice feeling. I don't like those those kind of feelings. Nobody does. It affects you. It affects your family. It affects your trading style because now you you know you become more aggressive or passive aggressive, whatever that you know. I'm not a psychology major, but you become aggressive basically. So that's why I lean more towards. I would rather small consistent gains and learn how to celebrate a $200 profit. I've also found that when I've made $500 and I try to go for that $1,000, I usually end up losing that 500 bucks and going in the negative. And then I spend all day in the market trying to recover. And then at two o'clock, I give up, throw my hands up. I'm like, all right. I just need about a hundred dollar loss for the day instead of a thousand dollar loss and I'll be good. Yeah. Right. Who's, who's, who's been there with like the, who's, who's like that. <laughs> yeah. That's like everybody, right. <laughs> you know, you started up in the morning with a really good trade. You, you got it and then, and then you give it all back and some, and then it just, it just ends up being a bad day. So I think that, the, because we know that the market is not there for you, the market is there to take its money from you. What if we devise some trades that are just simple that will pay you on a regular basis? And let's go through one of those exercises. How about that? So yeah. I want to completely disregard SPX for now. So I'm looking at SPX. I'm on the daily here, right? And I know that we're going up, but everything else is going up because the S&P, you know, that's what it represents. What if we take something even as simple as SPY, right? So SPY trades just like, um, trades just like uh, SPX. So if you really, really, really want to trade SPX, you know, just go trade SPY. It's going to be the same thing. But there are others that you can trade as well. There are others that, you know, things like, uh, that have a higher ATR, like, you know, MDB or um, what is this one? What is LMT? Uh, Lockheed Martin, whatever. You pick something that has a high ATR and let's go with that. Uh, the idea being that you want to get smaller consistent gains. So if you look at, um, let's, let's look at uh, this one, for instance, here. Uh, it has a high, an ATR of 9.6. According to the chart, it does actually move maybe ten dollars on average per day. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. If you notice, my grid lines are, are spaced ten points apart. So three eighty, three ninety, four hundred, and, and so on, right? So when I see price move one box or two boxes in one day, that's really good. If the demarcation here is about 10 points. I know that 10 points for me represents 500 bucks. Anybody know how I figured out that much? Why is $10 equal to $500 in profit? 0.5 delta. Right, 50 delta, right? So 10 points uh, movement with a delta 50, that's 500 bucks. And if I need to make 500 bucks, I just need this stock to move around 20 bucks. And I would take 60% of that. And if my name is Faye, I will take 70% of that. Right, Faye? Okay. Right. So how about we look for things that move? Let's 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 bump up our game here and decide. Uh, I'm no longer interested in just $10 movement. Now I'm looking for $20 movement. Or let's be more modest and say I want $15 to $20 movement so that when I adjust my basis i am left with 10 because i want to make 500 dollars every single time on one contract mm -hmm. can we do that yes, yes so the plan here needs to be look for stocks that are moving 10 to 20 dollars it doesn't have to be today but if it's showing me that it can move that 20 dollars in about two or three days is that a swing trade that can give me 500 bucks yes I think so, right? So if I start studying some stocks that do that, do exactly what I'm looking for, it takes them one day to three days, maybe even you know three, four days just to move $20. That's a good swing trade. And I need only about three of those every week. The same three every week moving up and down. 
That way I'm not getting into trouble with a PDT rule if, if I'm under the PDT rule, the $25,000 rule. So with that said, it means that I don't necessarily have to go a full 45 to 90 days. I can go a little less. That's the point I'm trying to get to here. All right, because I know if I go 45 to 90 days, for instance, on this one, I need to spend, uh, what direction am I going here? So this is uh, this is LMT. It looks like it's going up. Uh, let's let's do two examples here: a call and a put. Right? If we were to do a call for September 16 expiration at the money, being 4.13, I need a strike less than 4.13, so 4.10 is good. So I'd be spending around $1,600. Right? $1,600 is great. Right? For a small account, I don't know how small that is, but you know that's about 1,600 bucks. If I were to do a put. I'd be looking for a strike greater than 413, so 415 would be you know, approximately that. So again, around $1,500, $1,600 is how much I would be spending. But I would be looking for at least $10, right? So with an investment of $1,600 and I get $500, that is about 30% of 30% return on investment. Yes? No? Maybe? And where do you see that math? Because ten dollars is representing what? At the money with a delta of fifty, that is five hundred dollars. Yes. And if, and if you spend about sixteen hundred dollars and you get five hundred dollars back, that's about one third, which is about thirty percent return on investment. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? And you only need to do that about three times a week. The difference here is that because you're doing this and waiting the two or three days for this to mature first and foremost you know that it's going to do that in about a day or two all you care is that it opens and closes in your favor over the next one or one to three days to give you that 500 dollars of that one trade that's one contract so you need about three of those to get your 1500 dollars a week the question is is anybody happy with 1500 bucks a week Yes. Yes. Sure. What's yeah. the expiration you're thinking with those that is I am um, less, less than well, 45? I looked at, uh, for this one, I looked at 48 days, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. I looked at 48 days on this L and T trade over here, which fits our 45 to 90 days. But what if I went a little closer and went out maybe two to three weeks? Let's try with a 19 August, which is 20 days. Right, so I'd be spending around 940 or 1030. So let's call it about a thousand dollars. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So if I went out three weeks, I'm gonna feel comfortable with three weeks because I feel that in three weeks, my thesis of this talk, which has an average of 9.6, should at least move that ten dollars in about two, three days. Is that right? Mm -hmm. What so about, what about theta? Uh, theta, theta is, uh, and that's why we're going out three weeks, by the way, we don't want to go less than seven days because less than seven days. Now we're talking about theta, right? Okay. Okay. So we're going 21 days. This is something we are trying out. Right. We just wanted to test out this thesis and say that in three weeks, I firmly believe that most stocks with an ATR of 9.6 can move $10. What is that theory? Can we prove it out on the chat? I think we can. Right. Let's let's look at this chart, for instance. Uh, say you got in on uh, July 27, which was, uh, this is Friday, Thursday, this is Wednesday, right? Say you got in on a call at this point, right? Or you got in on a put. You most likely got in on a put over here and got stopped out. Why? Because of this formation. I would have gotten on a put over here. Mm -hmm. And I'd probably, I have, did. Yeah, <laughs> I'd probably be stopped out, right? But you quickly recover on the next day. And that's why risk management is super important. Once you discover that the, that the trend is actually upwards, then you now get into the correct direction. So let's say you got burnt over here, but you got in properly on this date, 728. 
all you needed was just that one day. Is that right? For your thesis to work. Mm -hmm. Because it did move at least 10 points. It did move at least 10 points from, from this day to the next day. And that's where your $500 is coming in from. Right? So we're looking for a swing trade that we know moves a minimum of $20 over a week or two weeks. And we're looking for $10 out of that trade in movement, expected movement. That's one trade. And we need about three of these every week. Can we find three of these every week? So that's one. Uh, I'd look for some others that are not as expensive. So let's uh, look for, let's, let's say IWM. I don't know how much these are, by the way. Uh, IWM is, uh, on, you know, for three, does it move? Well, that's too low. We need, uh, we need something that moves more than $10. So here's what we will do. Let's go to a friend called Bar Chat. This is a brand new website. They built it last night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you guys don't know about it they built this one last night uh, i'm gonna log in and push it over here so, gosh is good too gosh yeah gosh is good uh gash moves what 12 dollars actually let's look at gash first before we go too far so yep yeah. So this one is another one that uh, definitely moves quite a lot, by the way. And you can see I've played around with it quite a bit. <laughs> uh, let's, uh, I'm going to go three weeks out. Uh, spend about $1,400, give or take $1,500 at the money, depending on what direction you're going. So you can see this is supporting our thesis that with about $1,500 on each contract, so assuming you have, uh, say, shall we say a $5,000 account, right? $5,000 account, and we're looking for $1,500 every week. I think it is possible. I think it's very possible. How, how quickly can you grow 5000 to 10000 You can do it in about, about a month. About a month. Yeah, about a month, right? But if you maintain that discipline that that's all you're going to do is trade about three of them every week, targeting about 500, then you need a stock that moves around $20 so that you can harvest about $10 of that. Even if it can pay you more, $500 is what you're looking for. It doesn't have to be every day. It is every week on each trade. And if you have a little bigger account, then if you double that, if you make that into two contracts, then you've immediately doubled or met your goal twice as fast. And then for risk management, obviously, you don't want all three uh, trades to be two contracts each. That's a, that's a lot of risk. Instead, maybe you want just two contracts on one trade and then one contract each on the other two. That's how you manage your risk, right? So I like Gush. Gush is nice. So that one moves at least 10 bucks. Uh, MDB, I know, is a little bit expensive. AutoZone is a bit expensive. Uh, but let's not disregard even the ones that move at least $5, right? Because you just need a little bit more time. But those ones tend to turn around so quickly that they don't, they don't pay you that much. So... So let me let, let me go back uh, here to my original thought process on uh, on this new website I was I was telling you guys about. So I'm just going to go here to stocks and stock screener. You guys like to trade stocks or ETFs? Mm, either one. To me, as long as they're moving. As long as they're moving, right? So everybody knows stocks. So let's try some ETFs. Maybe this, uh, I don't know whether you guys know about ETFs. So I'm, instead of clicking stocks, I'm going to click on ETFs and I'm going to do ETF screener. How about that? All right? ETF screener. And do I have any saved? Yes, I do have some. So I'm going to look for 
volume obviously greater than a million 14 day ATR this time I'm going to go for 10 how about that and let's see what we have I only have three that's how come I have gash in there and SOX X anybody heard of SOX X the semiconductor iShares ETF S X S zero S O all right, let's look at this guy. All right, not bad. All right, it also moves uh, around 12 bucks, give or take. And let's see what it prices at on the on the three week. On the three week, it's also around fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars, give or take. You're starting to see a pattern here with around fifteen hundred dollars or sixteen or just under two thousand. Let's call it under two thousand. Even if you're doing just one trade a week, then you know you've got your five hundred dollars there easily. You don't have to go to SPX. That's my point. My point is you're trying to go with someone something that moves not so slowly, but reasonably, doesn't cost an arm and a leg. The risk is not that great because you're going to have a stop loss and it's still going to pay you a decent amount of money. And guess what? If you only have enough money for just one contract and one trade with $1,500, could you do that twice a week if it pays you in the same week? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So if, if, it mature, if you buy it today and it matures tomorrow, that's not a day trade. Right. Mm -hmm. So do it again tomorrow or another one that's ready. And if it goes over to the next day, that's not a day trade. But if it happens to mature tomorrow, that's one day trade. So what do you do? Now you've got two more trades that week. Mm -hmm. Actually more like one because now that day is like Tuesday or Wednesday. But, but you want to be very, very cognizant of, uh, you know, keeping track of your trade so that you don't violate the the PDT rule uh, and also making sure that you're, you're not getting into the middle of a zone, right? The middle of a zone, I consider the middle of a zone is when you're in between support and resistance. So right now we are, I would say that we are kind of in the middle because uh, this is SOXX. I haven't looked at this one uh, before, but I would say that my resistance is somewhere. My support is uh, down here. My resistance, I would say the first resistance is uh, somewhere there. So 431, I'm at 407. So 407, 407.33, give or take. That's where I am. And I'm looking to see if I have $20. Right now I'm in the middle. So not a good idea to to trade this in the middle because i'm interrupting the process and i don't know at this point whether it's going to turn around or continue uh continue on its way up but you get the idea the best trades you know an a plus trade to me is one that is at the zone if you're going to buy a call then it's it's sitting very very close to the support if you're going to buy a put you're very very close to resistance now if this thing turns around obviously i still have at least 20 dollars here right 27 to be exact so if i see this thing starting to turn around then with an atr of 12 more than likely it will hit 400 or 395 at some point over the next couple of days if it does turn around is that right right anybody see that yes this is how i would play mm -hmm. that if I'm in the middle of a zone, but if I'm in the middle of a zone, my my stop loss needs to be even tighter. Somebody say something. Carly. So if it turns around, mm -hmm. you're saying it's a new resistance. So that would be. Yeah, it just it would, it would, have, it would have formed resistance here. Yeah. Yeah. If it turns around, that is. Mm -hmm. So. Once it turns around, then obviously your support is still the same, 380. Yeah. And the rule is you need at least $10 movement for it to be a good trade. Yeah. But our new rule that we are testing out is that we want 
to make this a great trade, not just a good trade. We're now going for a great trade. We're going for $500 instead of the usual $300. We're also going for, for a swing trade rather than a day trade. Mm -hmm. That's the idea. We're trying to reduce the stress. We're also trying to eliminate the risk that we have been seeing with getting burnt out with SPX every other day. Can right? I have a quick question, Eddie. Sure. Um, when it, when it starts to turn around, mm -hmm. at what point um, are you waiting for that new um, candle to um, surpass that previous candle? At what point do you say, okay, yes, it's it's turned around because it can look like it's going down and then yep. you know it continues up. Well, so here's again where we look at the market and decide. Uh, and look at the data and to help us decide those kind of metrics. Okay. With SPX, what have we been doing this far? What we've been doing is looking at the pre-market to see where we are opening. We've been mm -hmm. looking to see what direction we're heading. And even though we know that it's not going, it's not necessarily going to go in that direction all day long, we know that it tends to favor that direction over the course of the day, right? Mm -hmm. So what you have to do is consider the stock that you decide to follow, whether it's SOXX or whether it's GUSH or whether it is, uh, which other one did we look at? LMT. L L LMT. LMT. And look to see how does, it, how does it work with momentum and the market in general. Right? That's what we want to identify. And, and so let's say you look at the market and decide, you know what? Uh, when the market is green, SOXX will trend to follow that that uh, that that scenario, right? When the market is uh, red, or when SPX is you know following is is going down, it will tend to follow that that scenario. So you can start to model it after some of the bigger index uh, indexes. I'm right. sorry, how did you get to that screen again? <laughs> uh, I clicked on market watch and then visualize. Ah, okay. Yeah, this is on uh, think or swim. So, so you want to, excuse me, you want to follow the market more so than the index that the stock falls in? Well, actually, I want to, I want to review both. I want to review everything. Okay. Remember, okay. Re okay. remember, I'm learning. So this is a new stock that I'm picking up, right? Right, right. We just picked it up and we want to understand what does it follow, right? Which, which, uh, uh, how does it behave when the whole market is going up or when the market is going down? How does it behave? That's what we want to know first and foremost. Mm -hmm. Second is when it does trade, how quickly does it move to the next zone? Mm -hmm. Right. Once it turns around, remember first, you know, when you want to identify whether it is actually going up. So look at the here's a tip. Look at these daily candles and look at the size of the week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does it does it tend to go down a little bit and then go up or does it tend to go down a lot and then change direction? So for this one, I can see that the times that it goes down just a little bit are more than the times that it actually trends all the way down before it starts going up, right? Mm -hmm. You can see that that candle over here. This tells me this this particular stock is actually following, is actually following the 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 S and P, mm. right? So whatever stock that you pick, you know you need to study it. You don't don't just see that oh man this thing moves ten uh, twelve dollars a day, so it's good. No. You, you want to analyze it a lot further, you know, right, right. right? So I'd be looking to see what index does it follow? How does it behave? How does it move? How, how quickly does it move from zone to zone? Essentially, the question I'm trying to answer is the $20 movement that I'm looking for, how quickly does it get to that? Mm -hmm. Right? If it takes a month, I'm not interested. If it takes two or three days, I'm very interested because I want it to be a swing trade. Now, if it happens in one day, that's okay too, right? Does that does that make sense on that? Hey, Eddie, this is Faye, I have a yeah. question. Sure. 
are we concerned with this new um, methodology? Are we concerned about um, the uh, um, assignment being assigned? Since you, if we look using no. uh, ETS, are we concerned no. about assignment? No, because you're buying a straight call or a straight put. Remember, when you buy a call or you buy a put, you have the right, right. but not That's the obligation. Right. right, right, you're right. It's, what, it's when you sell that you get into trouble and we don't we know that we don't sell naked we okay. we never ever advertise even when you have a lot of money in your account we don't sell naked it's a bad idea right right, right? you have to be super super risky you know, they'll make a movie out of you yeah gotcha gotcha yep. so no risk of assignment uh, right. on these ones when you buy it correct yeah hi eddie this is tracy when hey. um did, I just want to clarify. Um, so when we're analyzing the charts, mm -hmm. it's a good thing if we see a solid green or solid red body with mm -hmm. a little wick mm -hmm. versus mm -hmm. a green or red candle with a long wick. Yeah. Okay. And, and when we see that, not that it's a bad thing, we just need to understand how it moves, right? How it moves. So let's analyze uh, yesterday, for instance. I, I can see a small week on this on this uh, daily candle here, right? I'm going to go down to the 15 minute and see what actually happened. So this is Friday. Friday starts here. It looks like this is 9:30. So this stock actually gapped down at the open. You see that? Went down. It opened at 398.37. It went down as far as 396 before it decided to go back upwards. It did try to come back and retest, but eventually it went back up. So why is this a, re a green candle when it gapped down? It's because with a green candle, we start, we open at the bottom and close at the top, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have to analyze some of these things. Let's go back to Wednesday. What happened? On Wednesday, we gapped up or it, or or it gapped up so to speak not sure what happened first but it more than likely went down or you know before it started going back up let's go to the 15 minute you can go to a smaller time yeah. frame to that's see what that. i was about to do mm -hmm. so uh, i'm going to draw first draw a trend line over here so that uh, i can get my point of reference I guess that's that's good enough. All right, let's go to five minutes. Uh, I won't see it in five minutes. I have to. I have to go to. I've got to do something here. I've got to customize these five minutes. Uh, so one. The five minutes instead of one day. I want to see ten days or five minutes. How about that? Everybody see how I did that? Mm -hmm. so, so now I'm going to go. Uh, where did it go to? Tend. Here we go. All right. So you can see uh, what I did is I went down to the five minutes, but because my five minute time frame was showing just one day, I needed more data on that. So I, I added 10 days to that. And the reason I drew the trend line over there is so that I can get a point of reference. So I don't have to hunt and peck to see where it is. So on this particular day, which was Wednesday, it actually uh, opened up, went down, and then started going up. Right. So I would study these a lot more, a lot more before I pick on 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 a few, maybe two or three stocks to help me out. And again, the objective here is to get away, get the stress away from SPX and not have to worry, but also still meet some goals, some basic goals. And, and, and if this is successful, if you're consistently hitting that $1,500 every week net, guess what you do? You can bump up to two contracts, right? You can bump up to two contracts and kind of stabilize there for about another month before you go to three contracts, which is usually the maximum that I ever recommend for anybody is three contracts. Why three contracts? 
because that's a lot of risk. Yeah. It's a lot of risk. And it's all about mitigating risk when it comes to, you know, making this money. We, we don't want to get into that habit again of making a ton of money and losing a ton of money. So three is actually a lot. Um, and also when you have to think about three, it means that you're, you're, you're putting out $10,000 worth of trades every week, right? When you have three contracts, then uh, if each of them is, is $1,500, that's 45. Oh, my math is bad. That's about 13,500, right? Every week, give or take. Right. Or you can recycle the same five, five to 10,000 every week. That's another, that's another scenario that you can, that you can do. Uh, so that's my take on calls and puts. You don't have to risk that much money to get ahead. Let's compare it with if you're doing credit spreads and you have $1,500 to play with. If you have $1,500 to play with and you're doing credit spreads, how many contracts can you do? Three. Three. What is the average premium that you get these days on a contract? 10, 20 cents. <laughs> how much? 10, 20 cents on those spreads. Really? Oh, uh, you don't want to do that. No, that's, <laughs> you're playing only. Don't do that. That's at the end of the day. Okay, at the end of the day. Maybe you can get like a dollar if you do it in the morning, but if yeah. not try to do it during power hour, uh -huh. I'm finding 10 and 20 cents. I'll find you, Lean. I will tie your hands and <laughs> not make, and make sure you do not trade. Don't even touch. A don't trade at the end I'm of not, the I don't do that anymore. <laughs> that's why I went to the debit spreads because I was like, I can't see doing, putting that thousand dollars up. Yeah. So with 1500 bucks, it's safe to say that on a five point widespread, you can afford three of them. And on a good day, you can get with minimal, with average risk, somewhere around 70 to 70 cents to a dollar, yeah. right? That's, that's the average. When you're balancing your risk, you're going considerably out of the money and you're buying back your trade to close it for about 10 cents or 20 cents or whatever, you're taking home around 60 cents. Is that right? So if you're taking home about 60 cents per trade and you're doing three, uh, three spreads, that's about $180. The risk is 1500. Right. You're taking home uh, 180 to 200 bucks on, on that. Maybe three, maybe three times a week, right? But if things go wrong, you could lose closer to trying to get here. 410 times, uh, so 420 times three is what? I need a calculator. 400 times three is about 12. You could lose about 1200 bucks if you went to max loss. And you know we don't go for max loss. But if you manage your trade well, you're, you're still going to be down quite a bit. Not to say that with calls and puts, you cannot be down. In fact, you can be down even further if you don't have, if you don't respect your stop loss. But with a call or a put on something that is uh, likely to give you 500 bucks, your risk is probably 100, 150 bucks because you don't want to be stopped out. And if you if you do get stopped out, it means that you got the direction wrong. So... I think the calls and the puts are a much better way than the credit spreads for now until you get to the debit spreads, which is a whole different story. But on this call, you know, I, I, I don't talk about the debit spreads, right? I talk about those in, in a different forum. So I would say that calls and puts here can serve you pretty well. Eddie, I have a question. Sure. So I know that you mentioned um, a trades by getting into the zones. Yes. Sorry. I'm having a hard time finding zones throughout the week. Yeah. I am. So, this is Tracy. I am too. Uh, you are not alone. And that's because uh, we, we're kind of in the middle of we're kind of in the middle of, of things over here. Everything kind of models itself against the whole market or rather should i say s p is representative of what the whole market is doing so when you see s p 
I'm going to go back to it here, kind of in the middle of a zone here, that's everything. But we have identified that, let's say you decide you need that movement of 10 to $20 with a tight stop loss, then you can do it. But it's not an A plus trade. Remember, the A plus trade is still the one that is at the zone, right? Regardless of which direction you're going, we are at the zone. So when you're in the middle, your, tight, your stop loss needs to be tighter. Right. Okay. So if, tighter so if, with yeah, the expectancy of it moving at least 20, then it's okay to do. It's okay to do. Yes, that's what, what, that's what I'm saying. Yes. Okay. Because you know that you're interrupting the flow of it moving from one zone to the next zone. The normal flow is up and down, up and down, up and down, or zigzagging until it gets to that particular zone. Then it turns around for sure and starts going the opposite direction. That is not even a thesis. That is almost fact because you can see over here what we're doing. Right, we're going up and down, up and down, up and down until we reach that support. Then we start going back upwards, and it does the same thing. And that cycle repeats. Last hundred years, that's what it has done. So, when you get in in the middle of it, you're interrupting that, and you have no idea whether it's going to go up that day or down that day. And if it does go up, and you're expecting it to go down. Is that a fluke? Is that a one day thing? Well, it's going to turn around. So this is where now we talk about moving averages. So uh, I'm also starting to do, to look at moving averages here that I'll be introducing, you know, fairly soon. Uh, the exponential moving averages, I think they have a role to play. So we'll be talking about that, you know, in with, with some of my students uh, uh, to talk about you know, the 200 and the 50 you know, exponential moving averages and, and how they affect the trade to give you an edge. But good question on that, Peggy. All right. Let's see what else I wanted to do. I wanted to talk about, that was, that was the back to basics calls and puts, right? We're trying to figure out how to reduce stress, how to make consistent uh, uh, weekly income uh, how to reduce risk. Uh, there's a question over here. What's your emergency exit? How to play defense in a trade going bad? Uh, for that one, I have a classic answer. The The answer is my emergency exit is exit the trade. It's as simple as that. Does anybody know a better way? Lynn, do you know a better way? No, I was kind of just more thinking in terms of like, um, maybe is it best to just cancel replace or create the closing because you incur less fees? I don't know. I just think maybe there are different ways to exit, which is the better way to exit. Yeah. I don't know. Or maybe I was overthinking it. Maybe just cancel replace. No, just get out of the trade. Close it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's like being in a bad relationship and you're trying to figure out, is it going to get better or worse? <laughs> now that I cannot help you with. That's, that's a human th angle, right? <laughs> because it's more subjective. But in this, in this uh, scenario here for trading, I highly suggest we be as objective as possible and remove as much emotion from it because it's about the money, right? Your money, more specifically. And you get to control you. You're you're the single most important factor in this relationship. And if you can, if you can control the factor, you can control the relationship. So I would say that make the decision quickly or upfront, and decide this is my stop loss. And I think that will, that's going to help you. This is my stop loss. I am willing to risk two hundred dollars on this trade. At one ninety nine. In the red. I shouldn't be having to worry about whether to get in or out or to cut the trade. It should be straightforward. You hit 200, I'm out. Right? Now, it may go to 210 or the trade might, you know, might come out and then and then it turns around and you'll be kicking yourself. That happens a lot. So, what is the solution for that? 
the solution is uh, we'll just plan the trade better next time. Sounds kind of coy, can't, you know, that's, that's not a good strategy, right? If we knew that it was going to go down 200, uh, we probably wouldn't have gotten in, into it in the first place. But it teaches us, it helps us to get better at determining direction uh, and learning that stock a bit better, I think. So, yeah, things like SPX, you know that if you put a stop loss of $200, you're basically signing up to just give away 200 bucks, right? Right? That's that's what you did. You know, you you tell SPX, um, you know, two hundred amount. It will say, "All right, thank you very much." Right? You want a receipt? No. <laughs> right? <laughs> and here's a free drink. <laughs> oh man! I yeah, Paul, it is Eddie. I gotta train my brain to think because I was only focusing just on SPX, and now, like listening to you, like say, "Okay, just." find the other companies and I feel like, oh my gosh, I got to start all over with the study process because SPX works differently than the other ones. It does. The other ones. So now I've been like watching and stalking SPX. I like really stalking it. Well, the problem with the SPX is that it goes out with everybody. Even if even I'm, I'm rethinking SPX, I'm like, dude, chick, because I think <laughs> SPX is a chick. Uh, I'm I'm thinking she's soon going to be my ex. <laughs> it's, a, it's a temperamental man. It's a temperamental man. It's not. A, it's a temperamental you think so? Well, okay. I, 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 I call it Penelope. She's a wild child. <laughs> SPX is a different gender to everybody. To me, it's a it's a lady who can't make up her mind. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I, to to, to Jaren, it's a it's a temperament temperamental man, yeah, right? It's a man who can't make up his mind. That's, that could be worse. <laughs> Maybe that's oh man. So it's debatable, right? <laughs> but whatever SPX is to you, uh, you know that you know you, you kind of have to control that relationship a bit better. And we're saying what I'm saying now is that it's okay to find a new bay. Okay. Right. What? Yeah, I think it's okay. It's definitely okay to find some, you know, a new stock that is going to help us uh, be more consistent. The idea here is, you know, we've been stressed enough. I mean, this thing just gives us money one week, takes it back the next week. You know, what's it going to be? You know, do you want it or not? So it takes it all the next week. It, it takes it all next week. And then I have, and then, then it takes me three weeks to recover. So, um, but that's, that's enough about that. Uh, that that scenario now we know how we know we know how to how to beat that let me see let me look at some of these other questions how to make a consistent uh 500 mr, mr. eddie i have a quick question yeah go ahead i guess that where i struggle is um when i have a stock let's say the market is bull, and then i have a stock that hit the resistant uh, line so my thesis will be, okay, it hit the resistance line, it would turn around, but the market is poor. So that way I struggle if at that point I will short it or if I will actually buy a call to go up. If it hits resistance mm -hmm. uh, and you're in the trade or you're not in the trade? I'm not in the trade. Okay, yet. and you're trying to figure out whether mm -hmm. to do what? to buy a call or a put. Okay. Uh, that, that should be pretty straightforward. If it hits resistance, it means that it has hit the top. You right. realize that resistance is a top. For example, if right. you see, if you're looking at my screen here on this particular trade uh, symbol, S-O-X-X, -X, let's say you've hit 431. Mm -hmm. Are you asking me whether you should buy a call or a put? right and the momentum is green momentum is green so we're continuing to go up all right so i, I think you're giving me more context here so i understand so we've hit resistance we don't know whether it has it is going to break resistance right or whether it is going to respect that resistance and start retracing back so your question is what should you do at that point mm -hmm. well we should ask ourselves the question what do we do when we expect price to go down? We buy puts. 
okay and when the opposite is true when we expect price to go up we buy a call mm -hmm. how do we decide price is going up or down do we decide or do we look and this and the and the chart tells us what it's doing we look at the chart we do what the charts tell us exactly exactly so you're answering the question there so if we've hit resistance and we break resistance that resistance is now support i'm pausing here for you to think about that <laughs> That resistance is no longer resistance, it is now support. Mm -hmm. What do we do at support? We buy a call. Ah, here we go. Here's your answer. So, in order to confirm that you really want to buy a call, you have to watch the candles again and see is that supporting that thesis? So, you're asking yourself the question here now is. Uh, the question is, what is the market doing? Is it going up? If it's going up, yes, it is supporting your thesis that price is indeed going upwards. But you still have to plot that chart again now to find your next resistance. You have to figure out what your next resistance is. So let's let's take let, let's imagine that we are at 431 here, and we've hit 431. We've broken 431 what's the next what is the next logical resistance and i would argue that this is probably the one right would you say that that's the next resistance yes okay so do i have ten dollars is the question wait a minute what why did we jump the green candle right there what this one over here yes why not i think it's going up 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 but didn't we say that right after the green candle it went down so then it should be resistant there no? well let let me uh let me redraw my screen here to help you out okay. when we're looking for support and resistance we're looking for everything mm -hmm. that is above the 431 right Mm -hmm. I just hid the bottom part of that so that you can see it well. Mm -hmm. What do you see now? I see that 443. Yeah. Peggy, how do you like my, my new ink? Hey, Eddie, can you I like it? Look good. <laughs> Can you tell us how you do that hide again? Oh, man. Magic. If I, if I tell you, man, I, I don't know, man. That secret sauce, man, it's been passed down from generation to generation. <laughs> that's, I like that. That's, that's neat. You, 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 want, you, want all, you want all my family secrets? <laughs> <laughs> I am using uh, the tool over here called uh, annotation on Zoom. Wow. But you, but you can, but you can do the same thing on uh, using 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 a think or swim, because yeah. you can you can you can simply use the rectangle tool and decide to do this. Where is it? Did it rectangle? Mm -hmm. Here's another way to do it. You can uh, simply you can simply do that. Right. And if you wanted, you can even change the color of that to make it completely white. And then uh, hide everything else behind it, make it uh, opaque. Sounds good. So. All right. Uh, who, who, was, who was asking that question? That was. Uh, that was Faye. That was Faye. That's, that's Faye. But, but the question before that about. Oh. Uh, that was that, that was uh, Adua. All right. So yeah. Adua, you you understand why if it breaks your resistance, you have to evaluate as a new trade. Every trade has to be evaluated on its own merit. 
So you have to you know, ask yourself the same questions here. Do I have you know, at least 10 points or 20 points in this new case that we are, we are, we are looking at? Uh, is it in the, going in the right direction? Is it at the zone? And so on and so forth. All those questions you have to ask. Once it breaks resistance, it's a new trade. Or once it breaks support, it's also a new trade. We have to ask the questions all over again. Sounds good? Yes. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So let's see. Okay. That's cool. Mm -hmm. uh, I was responding to a direct message there. I think uh, whoever sent me these uh, questions, I've answered a lot of these questions. And if it's okay with you, I'm going to read some of them. So how to make $1,000 a week swing trading. I've, th I've answered that. How to make a consistent 500 every week using options with a small account. I've answered that. Uh, how to successfully trade in the morning and be done by noon. Uh, don't that, don't do that's it. That's a question. I noticed that the market move a lot within the, the first hour mm -hmm. or two, and then after that, it kind of just start off. That is until true. The end. Yeah. So I just feel like if I'm going to trade, I'm just going to trade for this first or second hour and then be done. If like, you're if you're, day, if you're a day trader, yes, that's a good strategy. So. If you're doing swing trading, it doesn't really matter. You can you can enter your trade in the in the afternoon, in the in the middle of the day, and then it will more more than likely be filled or come to fruition in the morning when the market is very volatile. If you pick the right direction and if you're and if you're plotting on the daily, then that should support your thesis very very well. For instance, if on this particular trade we decided, you know what? we think that price is going to continue going upwards and remember you're only looking for ten dollars what is the likelihood that you're going to meet that goal early in the morning it is likely right or if you're deciding that it is going to be go downwards just as likely as the same time to hit that goal very early rarely does your goal hit in the middle of the day unless you have a prolonged upward movement or downward movement for that particular stock especially if it's a swing trade so i would i would rather not 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 respond to that early morning movement on a swing trade i'd rather get in after that volatility why why do we want to wait for that volatility by the way because the premium in the morning is very very high right so you get volatility crash after the first hour if you get into the trade in the morning and your and your direction is wrong, recovery becomes very difficult because the premium shrinks. Once the IV changes or shrinks, that premium that was very high in the morning is now very, very small. And by the way, I will show you guys how to do a, a quick template so that you can take advantage of that uh, premium being high in the morning on your swing trade. Okay. Uh, so yeah, we, remember we're trying to we're trying to introduce the idea of doing more swing trades than than day trades. Day trades are burning you guys up. All right. Uh, how to assess the market to determine which strategy works best? That's a very tough question to answer. How do how do we assess the market? We look at certain things, right? We look at uh, pre-market. We look at the general direction. We look at the momentum. We see um, only the charts can tell us, right? Only the charts can tell us, uh, but also pay attention to the news, the FOMC minutes, yes. the FOMC meetings. Uh, anytime that they're talking about interest rates, they're talking about unemployment, they're talking about consumer price indices or index. Uh, any of those and you can look at that at forexfactory.com i think everybody knows forexfactory.com right mm -hmm. 
there are a few other websites, but I think that's the, the, the that's one of the most commonly looked at. Um, uh, so you essentially watch the market yep. the same for any other stock as you do for SPX because to get a, a gauge, you're you're watching what's going on, so then you can decide when to enter mm-hmm. the swing trade. Mm-hmm um like in the afternoon or you know uh after that volatility crush yes whatever the case may be you're you're watching the same essentially essentially that is that is that is the same thing that we're looking at uh just as you were trading spx you were watching everything else the market and all that you're going to be doing the same thing for all these other securities Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but the view here is that you you want to get in closer to the zone Mm -hmm. rather than in the middle because with mm-hmm. spx you can almost get in in the middle of the day and chance that it's going to go up or go down based on right, the f- minute right. but that but then again that's day trading right mm-hmm. different strategy mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In the swing trade you're trying to if you're trying to get a call you want when you know that premium has gone down which means that you might be watching other things like vix maybe mm-hmm. for it to shrink a little bit you might be watching for to to see when does it get during the day when does it get to its lowest point on mm. average right meaning that you will have to switch from the daily to the 15 and this is how you now decide for example on this day looks like it was just flat so i don't have a good reference on this second day over here it looks like it went up came down around 10 30 before it started going up on this day it went down around 10 30 look at that around 11 came down before it started going up. Let's look at a few more days here. Uh, Tuesday, on Tuesday, it looks like it it uh, opened down, uh, went down before it started going up at around 11 o'clock, give or take. That's when that decision happens to be made where it starts going. So you can see here around the middle of the days when this particular stock tends to change direction and set the tone for the rest of the day and you want to study not just you know a couple days you want to you want to study you know a month two months three months before you finally decide i'm going to do this live right study the chart and also play with it in sim anybody know what the sim is yep uh, I heard they were taking away the SIM. No, don't do that. You need the SIM to work on your execution before you get into a live trade and lose your mm, money. No, SIM is going away. It's not working. Mm. It's working on TOS. Uh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> nah, SIM, yeah, you, you probably have it for a couple more weeks. <laughs> <laughs> You're killing us, Eddie. You're killing us. <laughs> Donald? Yes, I am a rich man in Sim, Eddie. I know. That's the problem. They're taking it away, man. Don't do that. I'm going to be lost. <laughs> if, if they took away Sim, there'd be a lot of broke people. Yes, yes, yes. So yeah. they're not taking away Sim. <laughs> Work with me here, guys play in the sim this the sim is where you practice that's where you go wrong that's where you make the mistakes deliberately or and learn and all that that's where you become mechanical know how to get in and get out right the sim is not to tell you how much money you can make it will make you a million bucks in five minutes flat but you know figure out how to get in how to play that play that trade so uh do that in the same. Let me look at some of these other questions uh, to see. Okay, I think I've, I've I think I've hit all the questions. So let's see who who has a question that that they that's burning on their mind that that they don't want to to know. I have a question. Hey, what's up, Lauren? Hey, how are you? Good. Um, uh, before you said, before you started talking about the sim going away, but you were talking about the sim not being realistic. Yeah. 
And why do we say that? I mean, I've noticed all kinds of weird glitches, especially on a trade station. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, But mm -hmm. um, why why do you think it's unrealistic? Well, I think it is uh, unrealistic to a certain extent because it gives you exceptionally good fields, F-I-L-L-S, right? Uh Uh-huh. And there's not as much competition or volume in the sim. The purpose of the sim is to show you how to use the program. Right, right, okay. That is its main purpose. But people have taken that and because it works very, very well, some of the sims, the paper trading are very, very good, especially with Think or Swim, the simulated trading. You notice, by the way, I'm on simulated trading here. It's become so good as close as possible to to uh, to what is it called uh, live that people think that you know this thing should work just as well you know perfectly mm-hmm. right but you know, never forget that this is a demo application at that point it's a demonstration of what what the possibilities are for that broker platform so you should not expect the results to be the same as in live they can be close they can be representative but you shouldn't use those to determine that you know what i made a thousand dollars consistently on this particular strategy for uh on this thank, thanks baby all right cool i guess what i just got <laughs> was my starbucks oh. starbucks and she takes good care you of me trade starbucks you give starbucks Ooh. a lot of money <laughs> oh you man i got it made over here man <laughs> <laughs> you need to add a shot of tequila in that coffee. Uh, uh, well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it too much. <laughs> but uh, yep. Uh, so the idea there uh, that was Lauren is that uh, you know we'd seen and and we've seen thousands of reports, if not hundreds of thousands of reports of people saying that my strategy works in same. How come it's not working the same way in live? And that's what I mean. Okay. Right? So just because your strategy works in same doesn't mean that it is going to work exactly the same. So for that reason, I would say that use SIM as a learning tool, and that's why we're not there forever. And in my program, by the way, we are in SIM for at least the first two weeks before I make students go live on the third week with just one trade and everything else in SIM. As we learn a strategy, you practice in SIM, when you feel when you feel comfortable you've got about two or three trades in same i and i tell them explicitly i don't care how much money you make in the same it doesn't make a difference you're not going to take any of that home right the <laughs> yeah, point the, the point is did you execute correctly did you did, or successfully did it work right or did you just get totally confused well maybe we need to stay in scene for a little longer understand the concept the fundamentals but Telling me that you made twenty thousand dollars in same doesn't mean so much. It shouldn't mean so much to you either. If you can do the same thing in life consistently, now we're talking. You need to be on my team, right? Right. You're already on my team, but you get you get it, Lauren. I mean, we can argue all day about sim, but I would say take sim for what it is. It's a learning tool to help you be mechanical about your trades how to get in, especially how to get out. I get a lot of students, uh, you know, they're in the trade, but they don't know how to take the profit. Or when it comes time to take that profit, then uh, the natural thing, which is the, what is that natural thing? uh, You're excited, right? You're excited, you know, I've got two, three, I made two, three hundred dollars. How do I get out? How do I take this money? And sometimes by the time you get to, take that money out, it has dwindled down to about 10 bucks. So mm-hmm. you're, you're working on the mechanics of how to get in and get out. Once you do that, then when you go to live, you're not going to be stumbling. That live is not the place to be, uh, live is not the place to be trying it out. So I think uh, another uh, way to practice your execution uh, that's act- that I think is a little better than Sam is to run back the replay and play out the day 
as you if talk, you don't know what's going to happen. Like Do, the on demand. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. the on demand is is good. Uh, and actually, personally, I think that uh, on demand is also just as forgiving as paper trading. But it's a great way, especially like Jaren said, you have no idea what happened, right? So you can pick a date last year and decide, you know what, I have, I don't have any recollection of what the market did on that particular day or the next week or, or something like that. How do I analyze the chart and play out a strategy? Is my thinking correct? So that's a great way to do it. So yes, on demand, and that's the purpose of on demand to show you and to help you test out those, you know, those theories, those uh, fundamentals, uh, long story short, practice before you go live. Okay. So Eddie, I know, um, you will be uh, going over that template before you drop the mic. Uh, yep. Yep. Oh. Awesome. Yep. I will, uh, let me write it down here before I forget. Uh, so the template that I'm referring to here is, you know, basically setting up your profit targets, right? That's that's all it is. So, but we'll, we'll go we'll go over that in a second. Let me see what other questions we have. Who who who's got a question? Who else has a question? It's a pretty tough crowd. Okay. I don't I don't have a question. I just um want to just encourage everyone that. Um, you know, learning to trade is like learning a new language. You know, it takes time and you, you're you gonna fail. You know, you're not gonna speak the same thing. You're not gonna say the same thing. You're not gonna do the same thing as other people, but you still have to uh, find your rhythm. And I think that um, for myself, I started out about a, uh, in another program back in uh, January, 2021 and um, just starting out with the foundation of stocks and and whatnot and then went on to you know to options um but options is like another language and so um eddie um i joined him because i had he was in the other program and i felt very comfortable with what he was learning but even though i came over here it was still a for, you know like a foreign language but he made it a lot easier for me to learn it. And I practiced and practiced and practiced and practiced until I got it right. Now I, I do um, debit spreads, um, which are fine, but um, but the, the foundation is the puts and the calls. And that's what I'm gonna focus on from here on out. So you know, I just wanna encourage everyone that you just start with the foundation and then continue to uh, to build from there. Cause I, you know, we, we like to jump to the, where we're making money right away and we miss so much. We're almost, you know, uh, uh, walking before we crawl. And so just to, you know, keep you encouraged and let you know that, um, that you're on the right track and just to keep it, you know, keep moving, keep moving in that, in that way. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, thanks Yvonne for that uh, kudos there. Oh, you're welcome. So, um, yeah, lots of students who I know that, uh, and, and not just this one other program that you all know of, but, but there's plenty of programs out there that, uh, you know, claim to teach you something, but there's, there's a lot in between. There's, you know, there are a lot of gaps to fill. And I feel as though, for me, if I wanted to learn how to do options, this is the way that I would like to learn how to do it. I want to know what this means. I want to know the very first basic thing is how do I make $1, right? Show me how to make $1. Because mm -hmm. all I have to do now is just add a few zeros to that or multiply that concept. How do you make that $1? Or how do you make that $100? We all have, everybody has a grand always, you know, trading plan. You know, I want to make $2,000 a week times 50 that gives me about a hundred thousand dollars a year and uh, by the way if you want to reach me i will be uh, in uh, in an island in uh, uh what's the closest island to the u.s barbados 
Barbados. Yes, I want to be in Barbados, right? <laughs> um, I'm going to have to look up Barbados. It's not even in the U.S. No, it's the Bahamas. Oh, oof, man, oh, my geography is bad. All right, you got me on that one, Maureen. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to be in Barbados, Bahamas, right? And I want to make two, three $3,000 every day. That's my plan. But I don't know how to do it. Right? I've had options are good. I've had options will give it to you. That is true. But I don't know how to do it. I teach you how to do that. Now I'm teaching you how not to expect $2,000 a day. I'm now teaching you how to expect you know, $1,000 a week. I think it's more realistic. Right? It's more realistic to learn how to walk two steps at a time or one step at a time than five at a time. So, uh, kids will, will learn how to walk before they run, before they you know, ride their bicycle, before they're doing long jump and all that kind of good stuff. But they start with the one step. And here we are thinking we already know the first step and we're already going into the long jump, also known as SPX also known as credit spreads, also known as iron flies or iron condos, before we have mastered the foundations of the building blocks of calls and puts, how do we determine what is a profit, what is a loss, how do we calculate that, how do we project that, and so on and so forth. So I would say baby steps are the way to go. Uh, let's see what time it is. We've got uh, all right, just a few more minutes. Let me show you guys how to uh, plan you already know how to plan your trade, right? So it's just a template. Imagine we want to make consistently $5. We've decided that every trade we're going to take will be no less. It will have an, uh, it will be, it will have an expected movement of at least 15 to $20. And we're going to capture $10 of that movement. Is that, is that what we've talked about today? Mm -hmm. yeah. So based on that, uh, it means that whatever premium we buy it at, we are going to expect how much more in addition? Five dollars. Yes? I'm waiting for a few more yeses because, you know, make sure that that, that, that has sunk in. Yes. yes. I thought it was ten. Yes. Yep. So t ten, 10 is the movement, right? Now that 20 was the movement. And 20 is the... <laughs> That's what you said. <laughs> okay. All right. Let me let me clarify, Lynn. <laughs> we want an expected movement of fifteen to twenty dollars. That's that's the rule we're making. Yes. Mm -hmm. When we adjust it by sixty percent, we should be left with ten. Mm -hmm. At least ten. Mm -hmm. So it it does need to move at least seventeen dollars, so that when you multiply that by 0. 0.6, what does that give us? And I know oh. you have, and I know you have a calculator because you just bought it. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Okay, which one know now? Uh, uh, seventeen okay. times point six. Okay, seventeen times sixty percent. Yeah, yeah, ten. Ten, right? Yeah. Okay, how did I know that? Okay, well, we've been there before, so mm -hmm. we're looking for stocks that are going to move. 17 20 dollars give or take over the next few days every single time because they have a high atr and they can move that much in a couple of days that's our criteria so ten dollars is realistic if we're capturing only ten dollars of that that's 60 percent of that full movement that's where that 10 is coming from now the 10 dollars in movement represents how much in premium if we're going to buy at the money and we know that at the money is usually about 50 it is the minimum in fact we will go for 50 to 70 delta then we can simply do 10 divided by 50 to give us 100. Or 10, uh, 10, 10 divided by 0. 0.5 to give us five right mm -hmm. is that right no that doesn't sound right no you're right i did 10 times the, point, the delta is by uh, zero. Yeah. Um, let me say that the correct way $10 in movement times 0.5, mm -hmm. times 0 .5. 0 0.5 is five. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for a profit of $5 in premium every single time. So here we go. 
I'm going to push on, uh, I'm going to click on trade here. And let's assume th this will work either way. I decide I'm going to just buy a regular custom with OCO bracket here. Right? Did you see what I just did? Let me do that one more time. Right click, buy custom with OCO bracket. Everybody following me so far? Yep. All right. I am now going to modify this uh, default and I'm going to say that because by, by default, TOS gives me $1 and protects me in $1. I'm going to say that, uh, you know, I, I want a little bit more than that. This chain link, I'm going to break that. Notice that when I break it, watch this uh, section over here called link turns to trigger, TRG. Mm -hmm. Notice also that it gives me a plus or minus here. Mm -hmm. And my number here is plus one. Well, I'm telling it now that, you know what? Plus 5.00 is my new default. What does that tell me? That whatever price that I get in, my take profit should be once I have achieved $5 in premium. Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I am going to do the same thing here for my stop loss. I'm going to break this chain link here and open it up. Notice that I now get a TRG here, which stands for trigger plus or minus, and I'm going to protect myself by however much I decide my risk tolerance is. Remember, this is just a general rule. Your risk tolerance is going to be, it's, it's going to vary based on what stock that you're trading. Obviously, don't apply these on SPX because SPX is going to stop you out in 10 seconds flat, right? So let's say we decide that, you know what, I'm going to risk no more than hundred and fifty dollars mm -hmm. is that a reasonable risk maybe mm -hmm. maybe not I don't know it's up to you right mm -hmm. but once you decide that then you can save this as a template notice that I've got this padlock unlocked meaning that I want it this is a limit order once you hit five dollars go ahead and take the uh, close the trade if the trade is going against me by a dollar fifty cut the trade right? Mm -hmm. To the left of the word delete, there is this icon that says save custom order template. I'm going to push one time on it. You need to change it to good to cancel though, right? Yeah, good to cancel. Uh, good, good catch. Good catch on that, Tracy. Thank you. So because this trade might take more than a day, that is what uh, Tracy is trying to tell us here. Change that GTC. All of them, right? So notice this is limit, limit, stop. This is GTC. Everything else remains the same. We all know what exchange best means. Do we know that? No. You don't know? Okay. So your order could be routed through any one of several exchanges. All these exchanges are available. The most common one is the CBOE, the, the Chicago Board of uh, something. Exchange. The, yeah, and then there's the Philadelphia, there's the MX, there's uh, all of these, the New York Stock Exchange, that one everybody knows, and the NASDAQ, and so on and so forth. But you don't want to mess with knowing all that. Just choose the best, mm -hmm. right? You're telling the system, go out, get me the best rates. That's what, that's what you're telling the system. Okay. So, so once you uh, choose the GTC, the limit, limit, stop, you got your plus five, you got your minus whatever, your risk tolerance is also make sure that your quantity here is one mm -hmm. or if you're trading two contracts well it's always going to be two once you save this so make sure that this is set correctly okay. then all i have to do now is just save it and give it a name and i'm going to give it a name that is easy for me to remember i'm going to say one limit uh and i could say here take um uh, you know, 500 risk 150. Is that easy to understand? Mm -hmm. Yes. One limit, take 500 risk, risk 150, save it. So how do we use that template that we've just created? 
I'm going to delete this. What if I go to Gash and I want to buy a put using my template, then I, I just have to right click on, on uh, my ask column on the price, buy custom and choose my template. That's not it. Yes, it is. Oh, not. Uh, that, yeah, that one was uh, by custom. Uh, ah, this, okay. this is the one. Yeah, I've got several templates. I've been, <laughs> I've been doing a lot of examples, I think. So, uh, and now that I have a lot of examples here, I should probably delete the ones that I don't need. So, how do I delete them? Simply right click, choose uh, delete. I'm going to delete all of these that I don't need. Right. So you just pick any one of those. But but in general, this is how you, you can set up a template to, to do it easily. So you, you don't have to think about it when it comes to execution. You're not, you're not spending a whole lot of time calculating, you know, I, I got in at 1480 or 1380. What is my five point and um, what's my movement? All that good stuff. All you have to think about is by looking at the chart, do I have 15 to $20? The answer is yes. Am I going the right direction? Yes. What's the next thing to do? I need to enter the trade. Is it going to be a put call or is it going to be a put? Mm -hmm. Whatever that is, I can use my template on either side, whether it's a put or whether it's a call. Look at that. This one says it's a put. If I go over to the other side and decide to do a call instead, buy custom. Uh, where is it? Uh, I really have to clean this up that one there we go see that, mm -hmm. that can i drop the mic now no you edit it eddie let's say you want to change something oh is that again Maureen? yeah let's say you want to change one of your parameters can yeah you? yeah sure absolutely uh you can change it the way to change it is uh, maybe i want uh six dollars here instead of uh five right i want to make 600 instead of 500 so i can do plus six and i can save it again and either save it as a new template or overwrite the one that i just had now if you overwrite this remember this is a name right yep so there's a there's a dialogue here that's asking me do i want to replace existing custom template with the same name and I'm answering yes. So I've just updated that. But remember my description now no longer matches what I am doing. Okay. So so rather than overwrite, what I normally do is I, I just create a new template and give it another name. Okay. And if I don't need the other one anymore, then I could simply just right click again here, <laughs> go to whether it's a buy custom or sell custom, go down to the delete and then delete the one that I do not need. See that? Yes. Quick question. Yes, ma'am. If if I place an order without changing the GTC, mm -hmm. can I go back and fix that? Yeah, you can. How do I do that? Uh, I'm in seam over here. I'm going to push this and i'm going to send so now i've sent that order right your question mm -hmm. is once the order is filled can you go in and change that gtc to something else so remember the order is sitting in your monitor tab mm -hmm. and you're saying that you want to change this to day for instance right 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 so i just need to cancel replace <coughs> Okay. Cancel replace and change this to day. I see. Okay. And this will probably fail because we, it's a weekend. I don't think this is going to work. Okay. And you see that? It says rejected. Orders in the same OCO group must be doing what? Let's look at the message here. Orders in the same OCO group must have the same time in force. Right. That's what he told me. Yes. So you need to do a cancel replace on the group itself. So you can either cancel it and redo the order mm -hmm. or you 
Yeah, that would be the best way to do it. Cancel it and then do the order. Yeah. Because I noticed that when I go to go place order, sometimes like the the strike is it the strike, not the strike price the um the price changes so fast. And so, like you can see a stock that you have to pay maybe eleven twenty for it, and then by the time I do all my thinking, it went from eleven twenty to like twelve something. So <laughs> I'm trying to do it faster so I can catch the price I want. And sometimes in the rush of it, I just forget to change my uh, TIF to GTC. Then forced to the GTC. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can see that happening. Uh, with this new thinking, by the way, you no longer have to be so fast because it's a swing trade, right? And we're trying to get away from that stress of, you know, I can tell that, that that's, a, that's actually a day trading strategy that, uh, that you're referring to. So slow down a little bit. I think if you slow down, uh, go for the swing trades, get used to them, and also use these templates it's going to be much easier. So, cool. That's the reason why when you break the chain on the order, when you break the chain, I notice that the price go from the minimum to the other side. Like it give you the um the highest price. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, like if you. Can you try to place an order on something? Sure. Okay. So let me cancel this one and do it again. So you're saying buy custom and then uh, let's go with this one. Okay. So when you break the first one that had the green, when you open the lock, Mm -hmm. It looked like the price moved from 1520 to 1560. Okay. Uh, that's what I this, this is normally the natural price. Okay. Right? On TOS, this is the natural price. If you wanted to make this the mid, then you can you can slide this uh, blue dot over here from natural to mid, and it will give you the mid. But what that does is that it locks it locks it. Mm -hmm. it locks it because now you've told it explicitly what price to give it to you at okay but if, do you advise we unlock it or do you advise we keep it locked uh for me i usually keep it unlocked because when i when i do the trade we're talking about 20 cents maybe difference mm -hmm. right which is mm -hmm. not which which can be matched because 20 cents is actually 20 dollars but on a swing trade, when I'm looking for that five, six hundred dollars, do I argue with the system and lose the trade because of 20 cents? No. Probably not. So I will more than likely just leave it unlocked so that I can get filled. Remember, this limit here says give me this price or better. Better. Okay. So there's a chance, and I've seen a few times when I've actually been filled at a better price than what I put in here. Okay. But it is not going to be more than fifteen sixty. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right, Maureen, you. there's your template. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, uh, Eddie. Yes. Yeah, I appreciate you uh, uh, bringing down the uh, the importance of sale with the, the proper execution. And, uh, you know, that you share with the group is so important because I had, uh, I had set my account pretty close to, you know, $25,000, but in my live account, I wasn't close to 25,000. And what made it difference when I went live is that, of course, I'm trying to do the same execution in my live account and just doesn't have the, the, the capital. So I, I think it's important that we kind of understand uh, that, you know, uh, it takes money, of course, everybody knows it makes money in this business, but, you know, having your account uh, somewhat close to your $25,000 where you won't be a, uh, with the PD rules and stuff like that. And that's where I found out that now I'm just taking a step back and trying to find my account where I can be comfortable and executing the trades that I did in my cell. 
because yeah, it works. I found out it works. Like, like I shared with the group earlier, yes, I'm rich in sim, but uh, I just don't have the capital uh, in my live account in order to do those execution. And I think it's important that, you know, it's really important that that's the foundation of, of consistent profit when you make small uh, trades and, and build your account. Because the $25,000, it's kind of like kind of back, having you backed up against the wall. If you have one losing trade, yeah. it almost wipes out your account. So I just want to share with the group, uh, uh, thank you, Eddie. And, uh, you know, I learned so much um, in the um, uh, course that you have. And uh, I, I was not making money until I got here. So thank you, sir. And I want, really want appreciate that, all the knowledge that you share in your trading uh, option uh, plan. Thank you, sir. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, the, the sim definitely, you know, take it for what it's worth. And uh, uh, and I like your idea of actually making it the same size as your, as your live. But what I would say is that while you're in a learning mode, that doesn't make so much of a difference because you, you really don't want to be restricted. For as long as you understand that in your live, you, you don't have that much money as you have in sim, and you've got a PDT rule to, to work with. You have to, you know, one strike, they'll lock you out for like 90 days, right? It's a long time. Uh, so I would, I would still continue using the paper money. Uh, a lot of people never even change it from 100,000. I think it's 100,000 by default on, uh, uh, on Think or Swim. Yeah, it's like 100,000 bucks. Yeah, so... Um, a quick question or observation about... Yeah. The um, the stop limit mm -hmm. being subjective. Yep. So that part is understood. So in order to adjust or make your determination, even with that uh, using a template like you just did, mm -hmm. then you need to pay attention to how the stock moves when it retraces or pulls back or uh, whatever the case may be to get. Yeah. A good idea. Yes. Of where to put your stop loss in order to not get stopped out, similar to how you were speaking of SPX. Is Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So uh, you bring up a good point there, Jaren, and let's uh, let's think about that stop loss there. You know more in depth. What is one hundred and fifty, or what does one dollar and fifty in premium represent? relative to the price of the underlying three right that's three dollar movement right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so we have to consider here that if i put in a trade uh that was on what was that soxx so if i put in a trade over here and i am risking three dollar movement to stop me out is that reasonable can can this trade move three dollars can this yeah. talk move three dollars in price yeah yes mm -hmm. so the likelihood of being stopped out is very high so right? then you want to go with a you might want to go a little longer than that but the question is the reason that you're going longer is because you have no idea or you are not your thesis is still not baked fully baked yet because if you're wrong by five dollars on this one or if you're wrong by three dollars you're stopped out mm -hmm. what if we went with a half of that half of three dollars no half of uh, ten dollars half of ten okay yeah, yeah, yeah half of ten is five so if uh if i set my stop loss now to two dollars and fifty cents it means it means that if this do if this stock moves in the wrong direction by five dollars I'm wrong. I wonder whether you're following me. Let me let me rephrase that. So Jaren, you enter at 407, right? Enter at 407? Yep, you enter when the when the price of SOXX is 407. Yeah. And your thesis is that it is going to go up $10. Mhm. Mm so you put a stop loss of a dollar 50. Mhm. Mm at which point will you be stopped out? If it goes down 
three dollars uh, if it go right if it goes down three dollars you enter at 407 so if it goes down to 404 404 right so 404 is likely right mm -hmm. uh so we're setting ourselves up not very well over there for success but let, let's let's readjust that and let's say that what if it moves down by five dollars right from and four seven go up or down by yes ten. Yep. so you're taking half you tell me how exactly mm -hmm. right so 407 if it reaches 402 we are dead wrong we don't need to be in this trade would that be a more reasonable approach yes yeah i think i think it would be because that five dollars actually represents two dollars and fifty cents in premium mm -hmm. so your stop loss really should be 250 dollars have you guys heard me talk about 250 dollars Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's where mm -hmm. that comes from mm -hmm. so 250 dollars if you're wrong by that time it means that this stock has already moved five bucks mm -hmm. which is a lot by the way for a stock that moves 12 and a half mm -hmm. it means that it has already moved half its daily movement right you don't need to lose more than that to know you're wrong right right you don't need to stay in any yeah long. Just so I would say to prevent yourself from being stopped out, well, rule number one is you need to get in at the correct spot. The correct spot is usually at resistance or at support. Mm -hmm. That's number one. So that as it goes up, you're following that momentum and you make sure that you go, you're trading in the direction of the momentum. So you're buying a call if the prices are going up. You're buying a put if it's going down. And that way you can afford a smaller stop loss of maybe $150. Mm -hmm. But when you're in the middle, like now, mm -hmm. then you need, you, you've you taken on more risk. You've said first and foremost that, you know what? I know it could go up and down. I could be wrong. So I'm going to risk more. And that's when you go to that 250 bucks. Mm -hmm. And it could go up or more, especially if you're in the middle. It could it, go up or down more absolutely. because you're in the middle. Yes, you're in the middle. And you're you're firmly, you're fully accepting that risk because you traded in the middle of the zone, which we all say is a bad idea. Mm -hmm. You're interrupting the process. So you also have to be ready to increase your risk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's, you know, that's that's bad practice. And that's why we, we, we don't say, you know what, whatever it is, just increase the risk. That's that's bad management because mm -hmm. how do we, how often is that going to happen? Quite often, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Eddie, um, I missed the first part of this broadcast. Is this going to be on uh, your YouTube page today? I yep. missed it today and that last week as well. Yep, it will be. Because I don't see your last week's on here. Uh, uh, last week, I didn't have one. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> yeah. Well, you got, you, you got some. Yeah, oh, wait. Lane, Lane you, you're on there twice. But you yeah. look different. <laughs> I sent them the wrong link. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Sorry, so it's like three of me on here. I, I'm beginning to see triple over here. So th <laughs> that's cool. That's all right. But we're all different people. I see that. Uh, yeah, I was wondering about your question over here. So uh, uh, now it makes sense why that is. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the other lane, the idea is that uh, every couple of weeks is when I have Saturdays with Eddie. I was actually going to cancel today because I, was, I just came back to town. I didn't have a really good agenda, but uh, in the course of the morning, uh, somebody helped me create one. So <laughs> yes, it will be on Eddie, my YouTube. Can you clarify something real quick? Um, sure. When you um, mentioned um, the limit order and opening that um, padlock, you're saying that that is going to give you the uh, natural? Usually, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, but never, it wouldn't give you the mid. Because I'm always afraid to do not, that. Not never, no. It, it will give you that or better. Yeah, it, okay. will, give, yeah, it will give you that or better. Okay. Which but can be no than more the than the natural. So yeah, that, 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 no more than the natural. So on the example we were just looking at, the natural was 
15, yeah. 60. Mm -hmm. So it won't typically go any higher than yeah. 15, 60. Is that right? Yep, yeah, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, I guess. Uh, oh, yeah, you, I'm more questioned out, I guess. So. This is great. Thank you, Eddie. Oh, you're most welcome. You're most welcome. This is the best. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you are welcome. Thanks so much. Very cool. Thank you, Eddie. All right. So, um, yeah, just to, just to sign off over here again, if anyone is interested, uh, obviously you can uh, reach me at. Hey, uh, Eddie. Yes. I just want everybody to know that if you could take a guy like me and um, and help me out, you can help out everybody that's there. So, um, I mean, my math, everything, he had to hold my hands. And uh, mm -hmm. here we are. So, Eddie's a good guy. He takes his time. Uh, I definitely recommend him. Awesome. awesome. Thank you. And coming from Steve, that's a big deal. Uh, so yeah the, i i try i try i try to make my keep <laughs> i tries to make my keep what's the name of that guy that wrote that charles dickens something like that you guys don't read much huh <laughs> <laughs> sounds good all right guys well uh options with eddie let me type in my email here uh All right, that's uh, options with Eddie, or you can go to the website, which is options with uh, Eddie.com. Same thing. Either way, you'll get uh, you'll get to you'll get to me. So, thanks everyone for joining. And uh, am I still sharing my screen? Oh no. No. Oh, okay. I, I have thought... a quick question. Do you yeah. have a video where you show us how to set up our Tinker Swing? Uh, I do. I do actually. So I've done so many videos on that. Okay. Uh, and I do share my workspace. I think just last week I, I shared it with a, on a video again. Was it last week or the week before? The what? week before. I watched the video. It was in the week before, but oh. I couldn't see the, the chart to actually click on the link. So I kind of just <laughs> tried. Okay. All right. Uh, just such, I think two weeks ago, I actually pasted the link, so I'll, I'm going to have to go find it. And you can do the same thing. Uh, just search for Think or Swim on one of my videos. You will see my workspace. Okay. Yep. Cool. Okay. Thank you. All right. Good deal. Hey, Jamoka, nice to see you again. Hi, Eddie. <laughs> what's, what's happening? Oh, we're in the middle of a heat wave. It's all good. <laughs> Well, hope, hopefully you can survive, uh, get over it. I know it's uh, pretty hot out there in, uh, in Europe, so. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yep. Well, stay cool, plenty of water, do what you need Thank to do. Yeah, will do. <laughs> Trust you and the family are good too. We are doing well. Looking forward to seeing you guys again uh, later on this year. Cool. No problem. <laughs> so. All right, guys, I'm out. Thanks, Eddie. Have a Thank good week. You. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you. Bye. 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 B